Oh, kids, does Uncle Tony got a good one for you today? I'm on my way to do a really simple welding repair, but I'm gonna display a little trick for you if you don't got a torch. A way to cut out a weld without air art gouging, without a grinder, and without a torch. Can you guess what it is? Well, you'll find out soon enough anyway. So come on, let's get an Alcar coal, let's get over there. Let's go take care of this job. All right guys, so here is what we're working on today and it looks like they damaged the leg. So what I went ahead and I went out and I bought a brand new leg over there at the Harbor Freight, same leg that they had. I'm just gonna cut this one off, weld the new one back on. So let's get onto this little trick I wanted to show you. So what do you do when you're out in the field, you ran out of oxygen, you ran out of cutoff discs, you ain't got no other way to cut something. How are you gonna cut that weld? Are you just gonna go home with the tail between your legs or are you gonna do this trick I'm about to show you? All right, guys, let me show you how you cut something apart with only having a welder. All right, so we'll get all the wire out of the way, get everything that can burn out of the way first. We're doing an old trick an old boiler maker taught me. What you want to do here is take a 6010 and I'm going to turn that welder way up. I'm going to turn it up to like 220 amps and I'm going to push this weld out of here with the 6010. It's going to be a lot easier on the downhill stuff and that's where I'm going to start first because I'm a little rusty on this trick. I don't use it all the time. We're going to see how it works out for us today. You know, if I fail, you guys will be the first to see. So let's find out. As you can see, it's cut away from the trailer. It's very crude, but it's a good method if you need it. So I'm gonna keep doing this, just proof of concept, show you guys that I can get this thing off with only doing this. I don't really even have a name for this. And I got the amperage pretty much double what I would use to weld this. Um, we're at 230, I would probably weld it 115, 110. Let me go ahead and cut this thing the rest of the way out. As you can see, that's by no means a nice cut, you know, but it's cut all the way through. What you need to be careful of is just staying out of the metal that you want to save. I want to save that, I want to save that. So I concentrated into the jack. The jack is going into the trash, so we didn't need to worry about that. not the prettiest cut out there you know but like i said this is an emergency technique so let's say you forget your oxygen suddenly you forget to refill it run out of cutoff discs you just really have no alternatives you know you don't have any air arc uh, capabilities whatever your, your problem may be 
this is an alternative. It's not a great one. It took me eight rods to cut these four little welds where if I was using a torch, it would have took me like two seconds. But I gave the customer a uh, set price quote. I asked if she was okay with me filming, so I don't think she minds me taking a little extra couple minutes. But uh, there you go, guys. So if you're in a pinch and you need to go ahead and make a cut, there's one way to do it. I'm gonna go ahead and get a grinder out and then uh, fill, uh, fix this up. Like I said, what I showed you there was just an emergency technique. It's not to be used every day, just something just in case you need it, something to put in your back pocket. I didn't blow into it with the stick welder at all. Everything looks good. All that undercut was from the previous weld. I hit it with the uh, grinder a little too hard, but that's okay. Once it's welded, that'll all disappear. So now that we've wrangled our new jack into place, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead, lift it up. I'm gonna slip this box underneath as a spacer. The thing to consider is how easy is this thing gonna be to jack up and jack down? And of course, if you need to raise it up and down, you can obviously just jack it up. That's another good way to do it. Which honestly, I, I don't know why I didn't think of that. But hey, I'm gonna weld it right about there. So I'm gonna go get my marker out, mark the spot, so I can go ahead and prep it. Weld it up. Let's see what we turned up with. Looking good. See? Slag stuck on there a little more than I'd like, but sometimes that happens. Beautiful. Couldn't ask for better. It uh, came out really good. I'm really confident in that. And I mean, it's just a trail leg, but let me tell you something. This trail leg ain't going nowhere unless somebody pushes it with a bulldozer again. All right, so let's wire wheel this thing up, paint it, and that'll be the end of it. As you can see, we got a really nice weld there. Pretty good uphill. Again, a really nice flat weld. Really good uphill on this side. But yeah, most of all, it's on there. It's all painted. It's good. Even painted the ground up up there. Okay guys, that's it. Another simple trailer repair done. I hope that you learned something about this little trick that I threw out there. As you can see, this was the problem with the trailer leg. Uh, somebody had bent it in right here on the side so they could no longer get the leg to go back and it would no longer crank up anymore. So a new trailer leg it was. Well, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you took a little something that you could go home with and learn, put it in your back pocket. And the next time you get into a situation where maybe you don't have a grinder or a torch or a plasma cutter or various other cutting tools, you can go ahead and pull that one out and use it for yourself. But hey guys, I'm Melt Metal Anthony. Keep dragging rod, keep pushing me, keep doing what you do, and I'll catch you on the next one. And if you like what you've seen here today, like, subscribe, and share, all right? Do it for your boy, I'm worth it. All right guys, have a great day. I'll catch you on the next one.